Welcome everybody to Stranger Species. I am your host, Mike Davis, here with the lovely co-host, Ethne Davis. How you doing over there? Great. Yeah. Yep, doing great. So I think we were just talking. I think this is episode 47. You think we'd be able to remember this, but I never can. Yeah, this is true. So if it's 47 plus or minus one or two. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's 47. Well, there you go. So welcome everybody to this episode how are you over there um really good good yeah really really good life is springy today's very springy in the sense of kind of like wild wild (laughs) lots of wind kind of chilly and then the sun would kind of come out would calm a little but then it was wild i mean you went downtown and it was super windy yeah i took our kids and the neighbor's kids downtown so we have a cool a, park. We have very cool parks. We have a river that runs through um, downtown that has a big waterfall in the middle of town. And so I took the kids down there. We went to a couple of parks and then they wanted to go see the waterfall. So we did that and you could see it was cool. You could see the mist. I mean, it probably was rising. I don't know. 100 feet in the air due to the the circulating winds probably that and because it's spring runoff well, so it's probably water, a lot right. higher too yeah but it was really pretty but it was cool it just felt nice and relaxing and felt good and the kids really liked it i don't know if our little guy had ever been down that close that he could remember. Like, I'm sure he has. I think but. he has, but I think the time we went, it was much calmer. It was way later in the season. So, and the main bridge, there's a, there's a bunch of bridges that go over the river. And there's multiple small falls before you get to the, the biggest one. But that was all under construction, so it couldn't cross. Over there. Like on the, there's an island in the middle called Canada Island. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, there was a World's Fair here in 74. Is that right? Yeah. 78? No, 74 74. feels right. And so they had World Pavilion set up all over. And that island was the home to Canada, I guess, for that. So they still call it Canada Island. And they still fly a Canadian flag. It's it's small. It's tiny, but it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So normally you can cross through on multiple bridges over that island. But they're still constructing They're all all just foot bridges. But yeah, they were all closed. Huh. I didn't know. I don't know what they're doing down there. It's big, though. Yeah. They have to be interested. It'll be interesting to find out. So, so interesting. It was just a, a springy day, but generally speaking, it's like spring is officially here. Oh, yeah. I don't feel like there's any more hints we got of flowers everywhere. winter sneaking in. So yeah. that's good. I think we're done with snow. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. So I think I've been downtown. Well, I've been downtown three days in a row. And which I've is been a two definite days. streak. Oh, yeah. We go downtown like three times a year. Well, except for Hoop Fest. And then you're down there like two days That's in a row true. all day long. And concerts. Yeah. But even then, not in a row. Right. Yeah. So in a row is quite the feat. But I did two days in a row. He did three. And it was beautiful every time. I think you're just mm-hmm. reminded of the fun things. And it was fun. It was good. So that's kind of what's going on around here. Um, do you know what we're going to talk about today, babe? Um, Something strange. Yeah. A little strange. Something kind of intriguing, I bet. I hope so. Um, maybe a walrus. Hmm, that's a good guess. Um, no walruses. No, no. Okay. No walrus. Is walruses the plural for walrus? Walruses. I would think so. Walry. Walry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's right. I don't think so either. Yeah, walruses with just the apostrophe at the end. Rawless, this is because it ends in the S. Walrus, anyways, there are none of them. Okay, I don't know, it just felt right. Yeah, yeah, well, it felt right, but it was wrong. I was very wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, well, that's okay. You can tell me though. Well, we'll get there. Oh, okay. So, as always, Ethne never knows what we're going to talk about. She's on the wagon with all of you guys. I'm on a need to know basis, and I don't need to know. Well, if you did know, it would ruin everything, it would totally ruin it. Have you ever been caving? I have, have we talked about this before? Caving? I know we haven't talked about the subject we're talking about today, but have we ever? I don't know. For some um, reason, I feel like we've started an episode with me asking you if you've been caving before. I don't think so. Okay. Well, have you been caving before? 
So I have been to some caves before. Spelunking? Is that what that's? Uh, I don't know. I have been to some caves before. Uh, the most memorable in my mind are like the Mount Tipinogos caves. They're cold. Maybe we have talked about this. You talked about like going to the mine with the kids, maybe? Maybe we mean? have. Um, I know hiking some of the mountains in the Rocky Mountains up in Canada, Kananaskis country. I've definitely like, but I'm not caving. I'm like hiking and then there's but like a little, you know. You're like hiking it with the cave. Yeah. Um, gosh, not a lot of it. And I, I just remember being cold. So I love going into caves. I like walking around caves and exploring caves, but I don't like real caving. Yeah. Like I'm too big for that junk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I don't want to have to like crawl around on my belly through tight. Kind of oh squeezes. no, I don't want to do that kind of stuff either. I'm but six four two thirty. Like I'm I not... think it would be super cool, like some sort of kind of oceany cave. You know, where you kind of are in, and the water is taking you into like a path, and it's a, over you. That would be cool. That would be cool. When we go to Belize, we'll have to go cave tubing. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a big thing they do in Belize. I feel like I would be scared of hitting my head. Yeah, I don't know how big these caves are. I have are. no idea either. I can't even picture what. So growing up uh, scouting, you know, I've been to quite a few caves. Yeah, I bet. Here in the Northwest. I know it's just cold and dark. But again, not uh, not real caving. Yeah. Where it's like okay. getting your gear. And... What if you had the chance to explore the world's deepest cave? Oof, I don't really know how I'd feel about it. I mean, I'd have to know a lot about it to make a decision. Like, I, I don't, I can't answer that question because it, the, my first instinct is, mm-mm, nope. There's something about going really deep into the earth that mesmerizes me, but kind of terrifies me in like a haunting way. I don't think I'm mesmerized. Not terrifying, like I'm going to get trapped, like otherworldly. Like there's something majestic but in a supernaturally kind of scary way interesting one of my favorite books i've ever read is a book called the descent and it's about this whole civilization of humanoid type creatures that live underground and occasionally they come to the surface and that's kind of like where all of our legends of hell and the devil and stuff come from or the few interactions that we've had with this other species that lives underground hmm. and then they have to go down and it's and it, nothing like it, the movie, the descent. Is it creepy? It's not creepy. It's not a horror novel. No, but it's very, mm, I don't know what the right word is. I mean, there's elements that are creepy, but it's not, no, it's not scary. Just the descent. Uh huh. Hmm. It's amazing. Do you know the author? Oh, uh, not off the top of my head. Not We the you. Descent? No. No. Okay. Ethne listens to a new audiobook like every four days. So she's looking it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I, well, it's on the top of my mind. Otherwise, we'll forget. And then I, we won't remember. Ethne and I won't talk again after this podcast for like 72 hours. So <laughs> <laughs> It's not true. Once I go back to work and uh, she goes back to momming and all yeah. the other stuff. Well, it's busy season right yeah. now. Kids um, and all the sports. And the I things. don't know. So we'll have to, don't forget, okay? Okay. All right. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. It would be cool to say you were at the bottom of the deepest cave in the world. Like, that sounds cool to me. Actually getting there is obviously terrifying. I would have I don't to have know. I need to way it. more information. Well, I can't even tell it. you anything. I have no inkling as to what I even consider it or not. Because I'm like, 100 meters? Are we talking like... I have no idea. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, please. The name of this cave is Viravkina. Viravkina. It sounds like something in Russia. It is in... Or... You Georgia. Know. Oh. Well, not the state. The country. So it's on the border of Russia. And Georgia? Georgia. Right between the Black Sea oh, and okay. uh, whatever. It's part of the, there's the Caucasus Mountains mm-hmm. run through there. And it's Say it one more re- time. Vravkina. Vravkina. I'm probably not saying that right. I don't know. It's pronounced very Vravkina. Very Vravkina. <laughs> but I believe listening to it, it was Vravkina. Okay. So in this mountain range, the Caucasus Mountains, you find the tallest mountain in Europe. But, like a, but you also find the four deepest caves known to man 
are all in the same range. It's a limestone mountain range. Um, so they erode. They or, erode. Yeah. It's very easy for these channels question. to form in them. Question. Yes. So if you're up in a mountain and there is a deep cave, it's not like you're measuring a cave from like a ground level. Like a mountain is measured from like a ground level mm-hmm. point. So the cave may not necessarily be the deepest deepest cave into the earth. It is literally just, is there like a zero reference? Right. No, this is a really good point you bring up. Okay. So we'll get to that in one okay. second. Okay, I'm jumping but, ahead. No, no, you're not jumping ahead. That's really, really good. Okay. So this cave is 2,223 meters deep. Oh, that's 7,527 feet. That's Nope, I said that wrong. 7,257 feet. I, I tried ripping it off of 30 feet. Terrible. Yeah. I, my answer is no right away. So it's 23 Statue of Liberty stacked on top of each other. My answer is no. Your answer is no. Yeah. Okay. So here's what, like, what how, you, like, how wide are we talking? Um, so there's points of this cave that are giant open rooms that are, you know, 80, 100 feet wide mm-hmm. that you're repelling with ropes down mm-hmm. 500 foot walls. Mm-hmm. There's other parts where you're on your hands and knees crawling through itty bitty little channels. There's other parts where you're trudging through water, you know, like. How do you, but it's vertical. Yeah. Well, it's not 100% straight down. Okay. It's not like a shaft. There are huge vertical drops. Mm. And then you might be going sideways for, How do you, you have know, like slights for that long? Well, you got to take all your own gear. So we're going to get into all this stuff. Oh, gee. But so the entrance, going back to your original question. So okay. the entrance is about 7,500 feet this mountain okay so essentially you have to climb a mountain to 7500 feet and then you're going to descend all the way back to sea level inside of the mountain and then to get out you have to climb all the way back up to 7500 feet from inside the mountain and then hike back down 7500 feet to get home wow so it's like you start and like the bottom of the cave is right through the mountain. But you have to go all the way to the top to go back down, to, to go back up, ugh. to go back down. Ugh. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, yes, it makes sense. I followed. <laughs> yeah. So um, the entrance to this cave is kind of interesting. It, it sits in a giant field, this big open expanse, like I said, at about 7,500 feet, which is tall, but not that tall. Okay. Like when your dad and I hiked Mount Adams. Like, you drive up past 7,500 feet to start the climb. You know, like, it's... Yeah. It's up there, but it's not right crazy. Maybe that's about where you started to climb with Mount Adams. I don't remember. Um, But it's nestled up against the side of the mountain, and the mountain still goes up about 4,000 feet above you. So it's kind of big, pretty field... I mean, a huge, huge open expanse, mountain, and then there's this hole in the ground that doesn't look super. It's not like a big cave that you would walk into. It's like a hole going down, down to the side right. of the mountain, kind of in the base of this mountain. Who would be the first person to even attempt to just? Well, it was discovered in 1968. Go this far down. And there's a lot of people in the world who love finding these things. Sure. I mean, I'm okay to find it and like, you know, but to to, to go and keep going and keep trying to go and then keep going, that's there's real this scary. guy that I like to watch on YouTube. <laughs> scary. That looks for old um, mining shafts in Pennsylvania. And it is insane. He'll be like in a cemetery and there'll be like a half overrun, like big concrete sewage pipe that's like half full of dirt. And he's like, I'm going to go in it and see where it goes. And he'll like squeeze through. And then, in, he, you know, it ends up being in this giant old mine shaft, you know, he'll end up somewhere and then he finds old building. Like, it's insane. The things he finds going into these crazy I'm going to wait to hear about his death. Yeah. <laughs> that is what I'm going to wait to hear about. Ugh. It's really fascinating. I mean, I'm I sure it's fascinating. I just. The name of his channel. I wish I could tell you guys. 
but it's all in Pennsylvania. Hmm. But it's really good. Interesting. And they're just short, they're like 15 minute videos. Right. But, uh, so <clears throat> the hole, the entrance to the cave is about eight feet by 12 feet. Like I said, it's a little hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. So it was first discovered in 1968. Um, but it was only like when they first explored it, they thought it only went down about 1400 feet. Okay. And that's so from 1968 to 2016. That's all they thought it was. Mm. 2016 is pretty recent. Yeah. Yeah. But then in 2016, there was a surveying team um, that were kind of surveying one of the pits in there. And they noticed some small openings at the bottom of this pit. Mm. And so one of the researchers climbed over the rocks and found the head of what is now called Babatunda Pit. Ooh. Babatunda Pit is over 500 feet deep. Ooh, Babatunda Pit. Yeah. I and like it is that. It's the gateway to about another 5,000 feet of cave. This is crazy. Yeah. So this team that found more. Why are they surveying a cave? Well, they're Russian cavers. Okay. I don't know if there's a scientific reason or they mm. just love doing it they map caves and stuff interesting and okay. see if they can find new offshoots and new right, channels right. and so the same from essentially that team that found that is the same team that we're going to talk about the rest of today like i said they're russian um so they kept going back for the next two years mapping this cave okay. so they would go and find more right and the next year they'd go and find more and but you don't think it magically just eroded. Like no. it was always there and yeah, just yeah, undiscovered. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this isn't a thing that can just happen. No, this these caves are, I mean, thousands if not hundreds of thousands of years old. Okay. They're not hundreds of thousands. But they're definitely, okay, I'm going to say they are fifteen to 20,000 years old. Because okay. they're probably, all, we'll, we'll get there, what, what they're from. Okay. But they're essentially water reservoirs from the glacial runoffs runoffs yeah that carved down into there yeah okay so they continue mapping for the next two years um until in 2017 they hit the bottom so they go down they hit this bottom but once they're at the bottom and i say bottom in air quotes because they find another extensive system of horizontal tunnels so mm -hmm. think of like L shape. Mm -hmm. like they go down. They can't go down any further. But it goes. But it goes out over to the side. By another twenty thousand square feet of tunnels branching out laterally. But at that point, they can't call it a cave anymore. It's still a cave, but not going any deeper. Right. Okay. But it would. It's not considered a tunnel at that point. Um, I don't think it's considered anything different. Okay. They just aren't adding any to their depth. To be the longest cave i right. get it because they're just moving cave. left and right now not up and down gotcha <clears throat> um at 7200 feet underground um what's the oxygen like down there well so my guy who does things in these old mine shafts definitely always has this oxygen oh, reader you know yeah but they just breathe normal but they like, don't have to carry pack. You know, like how you go altitude sickness is like when you're mm -hmm. getting higher. There's no such thing for like if you're getting further and further away. But these guys are actually just coming down to sea level. Sure, but they are in side of rock that maybe limits the amount right. of airflow and the amount of chemicals and like I don't know. So I would think you would definitely have to be very wary of sulfur or yes. things like that. Yes, that's yes. kind of what I was thinking. But. As far as like altitude sickness and pressure, I don't think right. So. I wasn't. It was kind of a comparison. Like altitude cave depth is to height as. But if you were starting at the at ground at sea level and going down seventy two hundred feet, you probably would run into issues. Well, you'd run into water. Well, yeah, I don't know if you could go down seventy hundred feet from, right from sea level, but I see what you're saying. I just didn't know if there was something, you know. Okay, that you don't you don't have to take like O2 right and stuff. Okay. So like I said, um all of these lateral tunnels were a giant reservoir of water system back from the glacial melts. Was there still water in the lateral like the so horizontal? When ones? they first found them, they were all dry. Um and so they end up mapping in total inside this cave 10 and a half miles of tunnels. Whoa. And I most definitely could not be down seven two hundred feet 
being like, okay, I'm going to go through that small little hole and see where it goes. <laughs> well, you're going 7,200 feet, and then once you go lateral, you're actually stuck with a ceiling above you. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? So if something weird right. happened, you're stuck in there. But maybe being vertical makes me feel a little bit better because I can just go up and up and up and up and up. Yeah, and it's not a straight shot no, down. No, I know. I mean, there's lots of, okay, you go down 500 feet. Then go over, over go feet, up. And then up yeah. And then down, yeah. Like, but there's actually some really cool, you can go Google a map of Ravkina Cave. And it's very, you know, a little shoot here and do the dead end. Yeah. They come back to this tunnel and over. And then you get to the bottom. There's actually one point where they go back up probably a few hundred feet and it dead ends. And then, oh, wow. You know, so it's, it's all sorts of. Crazy. Fingers going on. Okay, over never the place. mind. It's not quite as streamlined it's not as like I was thinking. It's like a cave that you and I walk in where it's just like, oh, yeah, here's yeah. the tunnel, you know? Gotcha. Um, but at 7,200 feet underground, they find a subterranean lake. Whoa. What's yeah. that like? Like, can uh, you drink out of it? I don't know. So obviously, it's pitch black. Obs. But with their lights, it's extremely pretty turquoise water. With like jet black limestone walls. Are there any creatures? Well. This is so cool. Maybe. Oh, maybe. 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 Just maybe? So that water is at the water table. So essentially that's like anything below there is going to be underwater. Mm, I see what you're saying. And so at that time they don't map the lake. They do actually end up coming back with... Like a little submarine, not like a, like a drone submarine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. It ends up being, I don't remember what the exact dimensions were, like 50 feet by 25 feet by like 28 feet deep. And so at that point, at the bottom of the lake is the bottom of the cave, as far as they know. Cool. And that's where it's measured at. So that's the cave. Okay. So why are we talking about the cave? Probably because something strange happens. What though? I have Did no idea. attacked by a monster? No, they find a, a creature in the lake. That would be really cool. Well, let's see if I know. All right. So in 2018, September 2018, a year after they find the bottom, they go back. And I guess that this is a Russian team of five, I think. Um, But this time they go back with famous cave photographers, Robbie Schoen and Jeff Wade. Who are Ooh. British. I would love to be considered something famous for something so obscure. Yeah. Like, we are the only ones that do this. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we are famous. <laughs> it would be bad if you were a cave photographer and not famous. There's Me- only six of us in the industry. <laughs> no one knows my work. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm very proud of them for being famous cave photographers. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So the team's bringing them with them to document the cave, take pictures of the team climbing and rappelling and ascending and all the things. Okay. And the team is going to the very bottom to try to collect and look for new species in the lake. Yeah. Even like microorganisms right. or something. Like- They're not looking for the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, I mean, I am. Well, I mean, sure. But what they're expecting to find are like some kind Amoebas of or, yeah, yeah. single cell organism we've yeah, never yeah. seen before. For sure. A worm or something, you know, that lives down Ooh, there. Ooh, a worm even. That's like going way further than I was thinking. To find a new worm? Yeah. Yeah, well, you've never been down 7,200 feet. I know. I was just thinking, you know, like microscopy type organism. Thingies. Microscopy? Yeah, like Is you that have. Is a Canadian word? No. No, it's like I'm turning an. A made up word. Yeah, it's oh, a made okay. up word. Like y- you can only see it in a microscope. Ah, uh, yes. That's my term. Microscopy. Yeah, microscopy. I believe the word is microscopic. I think there's already <laughs> a word for that. A microscopy type organism. Gotcha. But not a microscopic organism. Oh, uh, that does work too. But here's this cool man. I like to make We're up words. Go with that. <laughs> so, Farovkina Cave is so deep, obviously. That you can't just call, walk in or climb in and out in a day. Well, duh. So, actually, where do you sleep? Well, that's a great question. Where do you do anything? Where do you go, poopies? That's a great question. 
Because you don't want to mess up the cave's habitat. Well, when you got, you have to like poop into a bag and carry it with you. you haul everything and in you and haul out. everything in and out. Just like, like anywhere. A, like a dog. But, uh, well, no, like if you're hiking, you can dig a hole and cover it up with Well, earth. that's true. When I say anywhere, I'm thinking about like Mount Everest, like mm. big climbs and you, stuff. You can't just poop there. Well, they're frozen. Right. So just freeze. But you're probably going to die anyways. So, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I love that. It's- it's motivating. Have we done an episode on that on Everest no. for the dead people? No, that's a good one. You can't say that though. No, <laughs> and you can't do it now because I've seen a documentary on it. Yeah, we won't with do your it. dad. I was oh, like, why right. are we watching this <laughs> in San Diego? In San Diego, <laughs> I'm like, why are we watching this? We're sitting here at the beach. All these and we're watching dead this. people all over. No, it was in the evening. It was. Dark. And then we went from there to watching the Japanese tsunamis. Yeah, <laughs> like why are we watching all these terrible things right now? <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good times. <laughs> so because there's so much gear just to survive being down there and food and stuff, um, it's set up a lot like a mountain climb, like climbing Everest or something, where you have permanent camps yeah. set all along the way. So these guys, they come all the time, right? So they have... They know what room and mm-hmm. like what space to so set up. So they have six camps that are left permanently in the cave at all time with gear, caches. Oh. Um, like tents. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like all their gear stays And like permanently. bedding? I don't know. Weird. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so they have to wear obviously special suits mm-hmm. because it's really cold down there. Yeah. And very dark <sighs> and very wet and very like sharp. And so you, sharp, mm-hmm. oh, pokey, like stalactites, and right? Stalactites. So they have they have these thermal under layers, and then they have these, like almost like a, I, I won't, they're not like neoprene, an astronaut. but it, no, it's almost like, oh, a, like wet a wet suit, suit. that goes over mm. that's abrasion Protective. resistant yep. and hard hats, and they've got to be warm, but also not get. This does cut not up sound and, appealing to me at all. Well, they haven't invited you. Well, they won't invite me. <laughs> not me either. Um, and so you have to put all that junk on before you hop on the rope and, and then you obviously aren't going to take it off to sleep. So you're literally living no, they in, do take them off. Oh my God. Well, at least the hard, not the hard, but the neoprene a, outer, layer. outer layer. Yeah. Hmm. That's a lot of work. They have tents and stuff like they each have their own. Yeah. So, um, so on that first day, once you go in, you descend 2,000 feet to the first camp. Okay. Uh, from there, it takes another four days to get to the bottom. Dang. Yeah. This is a long time to I get. I mean, it, it takes you like a week just to well, get to the bottom. that's not even the bottom. That's to reach camp six at 6,900 feet. Mm-hmm. So you're still 300 feet from the bottom, but that's the last camp. Right. So it takes you four days to get almost to the bottom. Well, no more than that, because you were saying from the first camp in one day. That's true. And so another four days. Yeah. So, so five at least. Five days just to get down to the bottom. Almost to the bottom. Dang. That's too long. Yeah. And again, like I said, you're not walking down there. That's quite the work day. It's rappelling. It's squeezing. It's yeah. walking. It's right. climbing. It's ropes and gear. Mm-hmm. and Yeah. All in the pitch black. And the temperature's just over freezing. Just over? Mm-hmm. Like one, yeah. two? Like that. All the time. Celsius. Like consistently? Right. Even in the middle of winter? Right. Interesting. Well, it might get colder. I don't know. I would assume it doesn't change much. Hmm, interesting. That deep down. I don't know why. The but... turn, you know, the external temperatures aren't going to make any difference. Right. So. Even like, yeah. Huh. Summer temperatures wouldn't make any difference either. No. It's just cold. <sighs> doesn't sound fun. Does not. Okay. So once they reach the bottom, the plan is to spend um, three days there, taking off from Camp Six and doing all these jobs they set out to do, mm-hmm. like collecting water spe- specimens. So, but they have to climb back up three hundred feet every time to sleep each night, mm-hmm. like because there's no camp, obviously, right. or no room. Okay. So, and then. Jeff and Robbie are there to take photos of the lake mm. and kind of just the team and do all that stuff. Yeah, the famous guys. 
So they've been, they're down there for three days. So they've been gone a total of seven or eight at this point Mm -hmm. without seeing sunlight, without. (laughs) Ugh, yuck. Um, Two of the team members have to leave early to catch flights home. Okay. And so they leave and they begin the, I can't imagine how many days it takes to get out. Probably probably the same. four. Yeah. I would say the same. So they start leaving. Mm Mm-hmm. So when they reach camp three of six at 4,400 feet, so about halfway up, um, they find there's a ton of water pouring into the cave. Mm, Like where the camp is? Yeah, like from the surface. Like there's right, water but like so down. where they have that camp set up, like all their tents are getting wet? I don't know if their actual gear is getting wet uh. or they're just like, you know. They're standing here, and 30 feet over their left, there's just all of a sudden there's just water. Like, I don't know okay. how it's set up. That okay. Way. Um, but unbeknownst to them, on the surface, there's a giant storm raging, mm. sending all this water. And is there no way to communicate? So, yes and no. Okay. So, there's no way to communicate in the caves, like wirelessly. Or via radio or okay. anything like that. So they, they do have a hard line literally ran from the top to the bottom. Oh, wow. So they can't... And I don't know what this hard line is, whether it's a telephone-ish thing yeah. or Morse code or how, but they can communicate. So they do have means of communication. But it's not great. But it's not Can great. you communicate along the line? Yes. Or like you have to be at the bottom to communicate... Nope. Okay. So these guys at Camp 4 immediately call down to the guys at the bottom mm-hmm. and say, hey, there's a ton of water coming your way. Just so you just beware. Like, we don't know what's going on, but there's a bunch of water here. It does not seem that they knew about the storm at the surface, though. And I'm guessing they don't have a team set up on the surface. They should have somebody, though, like almost on guard, like... For communication stuff. Maybe they just never thought that it would yeah. really make well, be an issue. The team, it was their belief. And these guys are not amateurs. Oh, I'm this sure. This Russian team is like the best yeah, yeah. that there is. Right. And they were under the impression that these caves could not flood except in the wintertime. Like snow melt. So they weren't worried about. Oh, and, even snow melt could flood them? Well, not like fill them, but, you know. Right. Cause but, really an issue. Okay. Um, and they aren't, they're not worried about the water coming down. Like it's no. part of a huge cave system. Like sure. obviously that's how they're formed. Like that happens. But they just want to but, give them a heads up. Gotcha. Right. <clears throat> they're on level three. They are at uh camp Four, three, yes. three. 4,400 feet down. Okay. So they're still further down than up. Oh, for sure. But about halfway. Um, but like I said, they do call down to the bottom and let them know about the water. Okay. Now, if you remember back what I said about the entrance of the cave, it sits in this big field, Mm -hmm. prairie thing, and then it's nestled up against the, the mountain, like the wall of the Mm -hmm. mountain. And so mathematically, the water's running down the mountain straight into the hole. Well, if you get one, let's say you have one square kilometer sitting in your ground outside. If that one square kilometer gets one millimeter of rain, and a millimeter, you know, mm-hmm. you know what it is. Mm-hmm. All your listeners hopefully know what it is. It's one tenth of a centimeter. It's mm-hmm. really small. Um, but that's a thousand liters of water. To it's get, a lot. Yeah. So to get one square kilometer, one millimeter high, it's a thousand liters of water. Now imagine, um, you know, that's not anything in our backyard. Mm-hmm. But if you were going to pour that down a single funnel, right, it's a lot of water. Mm-hmm. Oh, a ton of water. So all the rain from this prairie and all the rain coming down the mountain, mountain. are just pouring into this hole. And obviously this is naturally where it funnels because... There's that's a what's 7, eroding. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's why it's there. all eroded like that. Correct. Yeah. And so what had happened, they'd had like a week of rain. And so the ground was super saturated. And then there was this giant storm. 
So there was nowhere for the water to go. Mm, so it just all started pouring yep. into the cave. Which is why the cave is a cave. That is why the cave is a cave. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, it's for millions of years, or at least thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, that hole is the bathtub drain totally. of this mountain range, at least in this area. Mm-hmm. So it is funny. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on caving disasters and almost every one of them is a giant rainfall, big rainfall, of course, and people not being ready for it. But I mean, you never mentally prepare for this. You know what I mean? Like right. this is very out of the ordinary. Sure. And like I said, the guys aren't even that worried. It's just more of a heads up because this cave is 7,300 feet deep. It's huge. You know, it's not like it's going to fill up with water. A lot of the other videos I watch where people die or barely get out alive, you know, they're small little cave systems that, you know, they might only be three or four, two feet high that these guys are going through where all of a sudden a big storm hits. It's like a flash flood in there. There's nowhere to go, Mm -hmm. you know, and they're amateurs and they don't know what they're doing. It'd be terrible. These guys are good. So, um, so the guys call down to the team at the bottom. And the Russians really aren't worried about it. Like I said, they're pros. This sort of thing happens. But they're appreciative of the heads up. Now, Robbie and Jeff, while they're famed cave photographers, they are not... Cavers. Cavers. Professional cavers. Right. And uh, so they were a little nervous. Like, what does this mean, you know? But the Russians, (laughs) I can just see these guys like... Ah, oh, it's fine, you know, like <laughs> whatever. And uh, uh, so, Camp Six, you have to remember, was set up kind of in an upper chamber. So it's at sixty nine hundred feet. The cave is the bottom's at seventy two hundred feet. So even if the water pours in for a long time, it has to fill this entire cave system three hundred feet before it even reaches them. Mm-hmm. So they're not worried about it and so about a half an hour after they get the phone call um they hear the water coming and at first they said it's just like a distant rumble can you imagine being down seven thousand no. feet <laughs> and you're being you're with these russian guys and they're like oh, don't worry about it man and you just hear this i don't actually even <laughs> want to like list keep listening this is how uncomfortable i am <laughs> i will i will but i'm just telling you this is like the worst nightmare yeah so they hear this rumbling and as it grows it turns into what robbie describes like a like sounds like a thundering train driving through the cave <sighs> so loud they can't even hear each other talk and the this entire like cave panic mode. shakes like an earthquake oh like geez you know shaking down there well okay so as this much water is coming down it's going to erode more of the limestone for sure. Now, I mean, if it erodes it, that's not a problem. If it breaks off well, a giant chunk or something. kind of what I'm thinking. Right. That could be a problem. So, again, at this point, the team's still not even that worried. Kind of thinking even like, oh, this is cool, you know? But Jeff and Robbie are, like, terrified. Oh, I mean, I'm terrified listening. Like, just not. Like, you sure this is cool, guys? Like, <laughs> <laughs> We want to get out of here. And so Robbie was eating his breakfast when the storm what they're calling it fully hit so he rushes out of his tent but they're at the camp so they're They're, up yep okay so he rushes out and the vertical shaft above him is just nothing but a torrential downspout of water like the way that they Mm -hmm. came in you know and like i said he's familiar with caves but not anything like this being down this deep in a cave four days to climb down here right right there's no quick exit, right? Yep. And I also wonder what the language barrier was like. British like all your pros are Russian. Yeah, you speak English or they speak English. The thing is, though, everywhere in the world, everyone is trying to learn English. Yeah. So I feel like there would be a good enough communication. I, I would assume so, too. Good if, enough. If they've been, you know, they hire these guys. Right. Versus some Russian photographers or something. I assume they spoke pretty good English too. But it just made me think, you know, like that would be even more terrifying to be down there. 
Well, you can't even hear each other anyway because the roar of the water. So it's <laughs> like, true. I don't even know if it matters. Doesn't it's like matter sign language at this point, you know? So camp was dry. He's doing his best to stay calm. He's not liking the situation. The Russian team doesn't seem worried by it. They're just kind of, well, we got to wait it out kind of thing. And so um, that's where they are. And so at one point, well, so the water keeps going like this for two hours. Just this thunderous roar. And one of the team members, team members, um, must have been further away from the wall of water coming down because he hears this gurgling noise coming from a hole in the wall or in the rock, you know, next to him. And so he, he looks in the hole and he shines his flashlight down there and he can't see any water. So, but he still thinks I should tell the team leader, you know? And so he does. And while the team leader thought it was odd, he still wasn't worried. Mm. About five minutes later though, they go back, they check the same hole And this time, not only can they hear the water, they can see it sloshing up the walls of this hole. The water went from no water to five minutes. Oh, now there's water about ready to come out of this thing. And so the the guy who originally saw it turns and looks at Robbie. And Robbie sees the last thing he ever wanted to see because this guy's face was terrified. The team leader? Uh, not the team leader, but the other guy. It's like he finally clicked like, oh my goodness, this is rising so fast. We're all in big trouble. And so Robbie already is worried. And now it's like, oh, you know how it is? It's like, oh yeah. if someone who's under control, they're like, okay, well, we're all under control. they're like more advanced. Yeah. And then and... all of a sudden it's like, oh, they're losing it. I'm... Okay, this is bad. <laughs> I mean, I can't even, I'm literally going crazy listening to this. So you guys can't see me. But I am, I'm just holding in here. So instantly, it's like cockroaches when you flip on a light. Yeah. Just Just, everyone's scurrying everywhere, trying to pack up stuff, grab essential gear. Oh, gosh. Um, Where are they even going to go, though? I mean, their tunnel, it's coming down where they need to go up. Yeah. They're going to have to try to figure out some way to get out or get to at least higher ground. They got to figure out something because pretty soon their camp's going to start being underwater. Okay. And so... um, the plan wasn't to leave that day, but uh, right then the plan became to we're leave leaving that moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so the crew's moving as fast as they can, grabbing any kind of essential gear, mm-hmm. like the Russian team is. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Robbie and Jeff, not being pros, they put on their their wetsuit things. You know, like all of their climbing gear as fast as they can, trying to keep up with everyone. Uh, is at this point, Robbie has to make a really tough choice. And that's essentially... Leave his camera. He can't risk taking any of his gear with him mm-hmm. because it'll slow him down. He can't pack it up. Um, so he pulls all the memory cards out of all of his cameras, puts them in a Ziploc bag, puts that in his suit, and... Sorry, I need a little water there. Because this is a story about water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. And decides he's got to leave. Okay. And he leaves over $10,000 worth of camera gear That's down at Camp 6. Terrible. Yeah, that is terrible. No. And so Bobby and Jeff, the two photographers, leave first. Like everyone else is still getting ready. But do ready. they know where they're going? Well, there's only one place you can go. Well, obviously, but like... They're still, like you said, kind of, you know, you got to worm in and out. and Right. That's a good question. Obviously, they felt comfortable enough. Okay. I guess you follow the, the line. But because they're not as good of mm. cavers, it's like they need more time. So it's like, oh, you guys get out of here. We'll grab what we can and we'll follow you yeah. kind of thing. Which is awesome and terrifying at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, get me out of here. Yes, give me as much time as I can. But you want me to go do this without any of the pros with me? Mm-hmm. Like you just want me to go on my but own. But I'm like hoping there's like a, a rope that leads you literally like you're following something that has been threaded through all the different passages and tunnels. So as long as you're holding on to this rope. Don't let go of the rope. You know where you're supposed to go? Oh my gosh. I'm so freaking out. I can't even handle this. Okay. <sighs> Okay. So I don't no. even know if I want to know the end. <laughs> so to get to the ropes, 
to start ascending out, Mm -hmm. they have to cross this large room that has like a ledge along one wall. And the ledge is like what you have to walk on. They're like this giant big pit with like a bridge built into a wall. And you walk on that to get over to the other side. Mm -hmm. So when they came down, this room is about 60 feet tall and 25 feet wide of just air. Mm -hmm. Um, But now it was almost full of water. But this little bridge thing was barely even accessible anymore. Mm -hmm. So at the far end of this cavern, this room, was the vertical shaft with the ropes heading up, but also was the source of the water coming down. That's what I was worried about. Um, So the entire hole where the ropes were. So they get get across this bridge. They have to wade through, kind of, you know, slosh through this water. They get to this hole, torrent of water coming down. How do you go up? Well, the ropes are just bouncing. Well, I mean, that's water. what I'm saying is how do you even go up through the torrent of water? That is, I mean, it's essentially it's a vertical river falling down on you, right? So Robbie grabs the rope. Oh, geez. I... Which is just a fire hose, you know, mm-hmm. coming down. He hooks it to himself. Now they have... Carabiner system. Yeah. yeah. They're, the, they're called the senders. So you slide them up. Clip it. They, they grab the rope. You can pull yourself up. You slide it up yeah. again. So you're not really having to like work work to get up. Sure. It's not like you're climbing a rope. Right, but still. And so he gets the ropes. He's... But either then, how are you going to breathe? Well, Robbie finds out real quickly that it's nearly impossible to breathe. Okay. So he gets I... himself clipped to the rope, stands in this water that's pouring down 7,000 feet of, you know. And the water, he says, is just crushing him. Like he can hardly lift his head. There's so much water pouring down. He can hardly move. But he finds that if he tucks his chin to his chest, right. the brim of his helmet, his Keeps hard hat, just creates this little air pocket. Yep, this little pocket that he can breathe. Mm. And so what he does is he just stares intently at this white rope that's right in front of his face. Oh he my! He keeps his chin down and just keeps moving his and just ascends ascender. as fast as he can. Oh, um, with this water just constantly pushing him down. Oh. And so he just goes. You can't see where he's going. He can't. He doesn't know how Robbie's doing behind him. There's just no. There's just no stopping, right? So he goes, and eventually he comes to an opening where he can step off to the side and out of this torrent, torrent of water. Mm-hmm. And so he gets out of it. He can take a breather for a second. He looks up, and he sees where the water's coming from is a hole. That's about as wide as his shoulders. Like he's got to go back through this itty, itty, itty bitty hole. I I literally don't think I can listen to this story. (laughs) I'm not kidding. And so he just gets hit with this wave of like depressing fear. Like Ethne is right now. Right now. I literally need, I can't. Okay. I'm trying so hard to not freak out here. Okay. So literally, he's like, there's no way I can fit through this hole. Like, there's not a part of this hole that doesn't have water coming out of it. <sighs> it's not like a big, you know, stream with a few inches around the sides. It's like, this is it. Yep. Every inch of this hole has water. But he also knows he can't stop. Because Ethne's phone might go off in the middle of recording if he stops. So... He knows he can't stop because he's the lead climber. So if he stops, he's going to slow down everybody behind him. And he doesn't know how fast this water's filling up. Like if he stops and creates a bottleneck, everyone else might drown below him. And so he's got to just, I mean, there's nothing else he can do except try to push through. So he gets back into the stream of water, starts going back up. The water was so strong, he could only physically get his hand to move that ascender up a couple inches at a time. And his adrenaline just kicks in, and he just goes beast mode. And he just, a couple inches, couple inches, just not paying attention to anything else around him. Keeping his chin down Keeping so he his has chin an air down, pocket. Squeezing through the shoulder <sighs> with thing. And when he breaks through the small opening... He find, he just he just keeps going. Like it's like he doesn't even realize he's through the opening because his adrenaline's just so 
just raging through him. Of course. And so he's just flying. It's life or death here. Yeah. He's just flying up this rope until all of a sudden he hears Jeff yelling at him. Jeff is who? The other photographer. Oh. And Robbie stops and realizes like, oh, I'm in a dry room. <laughs> he like, like did climbing. <laughs> yeah. Like, like a madman. Once he got through that water. And, uh, well, Jeff at least was doing the same thing. Yep. Jeff was still right behind him. Oh, good job, Jeff. Yeah. And so they realized that the room they're in, the water's coming down, then going some other channel back to where that oh. channel was. So they're in like this dry. So space. they just waited out there. And so, <clears throat> yeah. They decide to uh, wait for the Russians or. Well, no, but they're going to at least stop. Like, take a take, breath take a and, breath. like, regroup. So the Dukes get going again, and they climb up to Camp 5. So they started at 6. Mm-hmm. So they they're go up, um, which is at 6,200 feet. Okay. So they've climbed 700 feet. That's amazing. Yeah. Now there, they just collapse and wait. Exhausted, exhilarated, whatever word you want to use. But it's dry. It's dry at okay. Camp 5. And they wait for the Russians. Now, they don't know if the Russians are alive. They don't know if the Russians have drowned. They don't, don't know, know anything. anything about them. But they just, they can't go any farther. Well, like, I mean, just, mentally, emotionally, yeah. all of it. I'm just, sure they're crying. I'm sure oh, they're... Oh, would be a mess. Yeah. And on top of that, I mean, you'd be so grateful. And then you'd also be like, I still have 6,200 feet I have to climb well, to get out of here. Well, and you'd also be like... I left 10 grand worth of equipment. <laughs> I don't think I'd be there at this point. Not at this point, but you'd get there. I would definitely get there, especially <laughs> if that's your livelihood. Yeah. But I'm hoping that this is really good equipment. It's waterproof, that even if it was submerged, somehow it stayed in the camp area and then they could recover it. Yeah, I'm sure it didn't get thrashed and smashed on all the rocks with the no. torrents of water. No, it's just nicely filling up slowly. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, just kidding. Maybe he put it in its case. Maybe he has like a cool little... Like a waterproof Waterproof. Case. Yeah, so he gets it case. back later. Oh, yeah. He doesn't get it back later. Just so you know. How do you know? I'm telling you the story. Oh, you know the answer? Yeah. Okay, fine. That makes His me sad. His camera gear is a fatality in the story. Mm, well, at least it's not him. That's true. Yeah. Michael. What? No. Well, you have to keep listening. You can't tell me this story. <sighs> you knew this was going to kill me, right? I did. It's actually funny. When I write these, I don't know what's going to ever get you. And when, this when is people terrible. who listen talk to me about it, it's funny, too. Like, which ones people are like, oh, my goodness, that one was so riveting. And someone else is like, oh, I don't like that one. This one was so riveting. You know? And okay, keep so going. Everyone's just their own thing, you know? I feel like my anxiousness, I need to just get it over with. Okay. Yep. They all die. Are you serious? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Keep going. So, um, so they sit there. They still have 6,200 feet to go. For all they know, all the professionals with them are dead. Couldn't they just wait it out until they saw signs of needing to leave again? Like, even if it was a whole nother, like, to hopefully have the water stop. Yeah. Yeah. You could. Right? Like, so they're waiting. Okay. So it's just about 15 minutes later, they see a lone headlight <sighs> coming up. And it was one of the Russians, and they ask him, like, hey, where, have you seen everyone else? And he just shakes his head. Like, he doesn't know if they've made it. He doesn't know anything about them. Now, down below, remember that big cavern that I was talking about? The, the one they had up with like, the bridge, the mm-hmm. ledge that they had across? So by the time the Russians got to that room, that room was completely full of water. And they had to literally swim to the ropes. Yikes. Um, or maybe that wasn't completely full of water, but the bridge was gone. Right. There was no walking back to the ropes. And so, but on top of that, because the water was draining down below, it became a giant whirlpool. Mm. And so it was a very, very hard swim. They almost lost their leader, but he did make it through. Uh, it's about 15 minutes after that first Russian makes it. Um, they see five more headlights coming oh up. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So. That's amazing. The whole team makes it to camp five. 
Nobody died, Zathni. <gasps> well, they're only at cabin five. Yet. Oh, my goodness. I seriously can't handle this anymore. Is it almost over? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like dying, I'm there. literally sweating. Like that's funny. I can't handle it. Okay, so they, <laughs> the Russians get to Camp Five. What do you think they do when they get to Camp Five? They cry. Nope. They take off their gear. They start laughing. They start making food. Like well, that was a crazy day. Wait, no, they don't. <laughs> they do. No. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, like man, didn't see that coming. Woo. What well, do they think they're just fine though? Like, would you just get out? Well, I don't think they still can get out. Right, because of the because of the water, but now they're at least somewhere else. So now it's another seven hundred feet that the water's got to. Yeah, but I would not fill. take my gear off because what if you're ending up being in the same situation? Cool. Robbie is terrified, and he will not take his gear. I off. would not move. Yeah. I would literally be like, okay, the second that that water is trickling or done, I'm out of here. I do yeah. not. So Rob is much like you. Yeah, like he wasn't taking off his outer shell. Nope. He wasn't taking nope. care about food. Nope, the I wouldn't even be able to like, eat. You know, taking their boots off. <laughs> cooking up meals no they are not <laughs> <laughs> laughing about it like man goodness that was a crazy afternoon i don't believe it <laughs> i don't believe it so but they were stuck there um the, so the past there was a passage ahead of them uh um, when you say a passage ahead of them you mean above them above them yeah uh-huh. so <clears throat> one of the passages that to get down to the bottom on a normal day is about half full of water. Like you have to wade through it. Mm-hmm. That passage was completely submerged in water. So there's no there way. There was no, until it stopped, there was nowhere to go. I mean, at this point, either it's not going to stop and eventually you're all going to drown mm-hmm. or it's going to stop and you're going to get out. Right. Um, And so all they could do was wait at Camp 5 and hope that the water never got to them. And so the flood lasted for 20 hours. 20, 20 hours, hours they sat there i waited at camp five actually i guess it was 16 hours it was 20 hours in total so they were okay. at camp five for 16 hours um but eventually it stopped and uh everyone made it out alive they were finally able to make it up to the top did he keep on his stuff for all 20 hours i don't know i would have i seriously would have i probably would have too like i'm not doing this again man yeah I mean, this is insane. Yeah. I might have unzipped it. <laughs> kind of got a little airflow in there, but that's about it. So, like that everyone made it out safe. They did make some big team changes to their protocols. That's afterwards. good. Yeah, you you live and learn from mm-hmm. usually mistakes like that are big. So they installed a new camp at the bottom to get away from flooding, like in a different higher chamber that would be easier to get to. I guess. Mm, okay. Interesting. Um, and they changed the way they monitored rain. <laughs> Good. Like I said, they didn't think it could flood. Right. They just had. And again, you know. And don't... it was a very. Unique. Very unique yeah. situation that even allowed it to flood in the first place. That it had to rain for a week straight, saturate the ground, then have a giant storm yeah. that lasted so long. Wow. We need rain. Not that much, but we need rain. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm so glad that everyone lived. Everyone lived. Oh, I was literally like, just, I feel so much better. Until 2021. So this is in 2018. Are you being serious right now? I'm being serious right now. No. So the team went back in 2021. The same team? Mm-hmm. With the same photographers? No, I don't think the photographers were with them. They're like, time. we're done. We're never doing yeah. this again. We are not famous. <laughs> yeah. I will just walk into caves. <laughs> if I can't walk into it, I am not taking a picture of it. Okay. Yeah. So the team shows up in 2021 and they find something very out of the ordinary. And that is climbing ropes hooked to the rocks at the entrance of the cave. Now, this is a huge no-no in the caving world. What is the no-no? You can't never leave your ropes like attached when you're not there because then just some random anybody could get access to the cave. But I mean, what if other people were climbing it? Well, that would be fine. So the thing is either, yeah, someone left their ropes and is breaking this big cardinal rule or they're somewhere still down in the cave. Yeah, but... But this is a cave that's so remote, like, it's not like... 
oh, it's just in the mountain pass where anybody can get right. to on the weekend. You know, this is the only team that ever goes in this cave because mm-hmm. it's so, this is why they leave all these camps and stuff. Like, so you're, they're thinking, what, what, what are they thinking when they see this rope? I'm not sure what they're thinking, but they're thinking something's amiss. Well, sure. But are they thinking a random person is down oh, there? Sure. They're thinking, yeah, somebody has been here and either A, they're still down there or B, they're very amateurish because they don't know what they're doing or they wouldn't have left the ropes here. But they did come back out. Like that's an option. They right. could have come back have out come and, and just left, left their and stuff. Left their stuff okay. Which is a big no no. I guess. Well, because you don't want like some sixteen year olds walking by and be like, Oh, cool, look at these ropes into this cave and they mm. go down and they never get themselves back out. I see what you're saying. And so a lot of caves will actually have a lock on them. They'll have like a gate and a lock or a cover. Oh. So you have to have permission to get into them to avoid Permission from who? Like park, like park people or landowners oh. or whatever, because maybe it is like okay, no one can go in during the rainy season, mm. or no one can go in. You know, interesting. Or we have to make sure that you're qualified to go in because we don't want you drowning or dying, dying. in our cave. You know, oh, interesting. Yeah. And so, okay. So, anyways, they go down the cave, and like I said, this is a, a remote, big, big, yeah. big. You have to rappel down the mm-hmm. initial, mm-hmm. and so. Um, at camp, what camp was it? I want to say camp three. So 3,600 feet down. Okay. They find a body of a lone hiker, um, climber from Sochi, Russia, who had gone missing in November of 2020. And apparently had gone down, spent about a week at the permanent camp at about minus 2,000 feet. Um, and then just couldn't get themselves back up. Well, he got down to was there. It seemed like for about a week at the, the two thousand foot camp. Got down to the thirty six hundred foot camp, where um, he couldn't get himself out. Well, I don't know if he couldn't get himself out or not, but he didn't have the the right equipment and skill, and he ended up dying of hypothermia because mm. it's really really cold. cold. And so they find this body down there, Oof. which wouldn't be a fun sight. No. And they actually do do this huge rescue mission and get the body out oh, good. to return him home and stuff. But that was kind of sad. That is sad. But they still were constantly working in the cave. But it wasn't the team that died. No team members died. Well, that's good. Because they're pros I and mean, they didn't even care. I mean, I don't think that they really <laughs> didn't care. Once they survived, they didn't care. I think that. The guy's interpretation, the photographer's interpretation, is that they didn't care. But they probably did care. Yeah. Culturally, there's a lot of things like that that happen where you're like, why would someone do that? But yeah, it's just because you don't understand the culture. <gasps> but yeah, they all made it out. Okay. That was too stressful. <laughs> you you can't do these ones in many okay, we'll like do a mess. A, I don't know what we'll do next week. We'll I, do a I don't know one. if it's like that. That means that I have like this innate fear of drowning or something because I don't know why. It, that one is. Did the one get you when they all drowned in the poop boat? I don't know if it's more like. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't know. Not it's the like tension. this. The, are they going to make it? Are they not going to no, make it? No, it's more so that feeling of like we physically are like able to get out and get ourselves up, but we physically can't get ourselves up because of this situation. And you just know it's coming. It's like this terrible. Mm. I don't know, like, and also, like, almost slow. Not slow, but, like... But the situation's slow. Yeah, so, I don't know. Ugh. Listen, has a happy ending, I think. Yeah, I'm, like, all tense. I need to go, like, have a massage. <laughs> go some hot tub, man. <laughs> or that. That would work, too. So, well, good. Well, I'm glad you survived. I'm glad they survived. I'm glad they survived. Yeah. So that you could survive. I'm sad that the other person didn't. Um, This is a, a life lesson. Don't go down a cave... If you're not qualified, and even if you think you're qualified, don't go down alone. Always go with a buddy. The buddy, buddy system, system is the best. For all things. Everything. So the moral of the episode, buddy system. Buddy system when caving and, and all things. a neoprene suit. Yeah, I don't know if it's neoprene, but it's something. Well, something. Anyways, you can go Google the Vrovkina cave. You'll see a lot of the pictures from this expedition. Um, it's a cool cave. I mean, 
Yeah. These big giant shafts. I'm and, sure. I'm sure it's amazing and something that I would not want to do. There you go. Yep. Ooh, so I'm yawning. Uh oh. It's getting late. Yeah. Well, All right, everybody. Well, we will be back next week, as always, with some other episode about some other thing that Ethne doesn't know about. And at this point, I don't know about either. It won't be dead bodies on Mount Everest. It will not be <laughs> dead bodies on Mount Everest. I, it is know, I know too much though. about that because of my father-in-law. So we can't do that one. And they, I don't uh, want to. I started a, a podcast with a buddy a few years ago. We did one episode and then he moved. And then I went on hiatus for a while until Ethne did this with me. But our one episode we recorded was on the bodies of Mount Everest. And they literally, because they can't get them off the, bount, the mountain, so they use them as like guideposts. Like, okay, you're going to climb up there. And once you see, um, you know, one of the famous ones, his name's Green Boots, because that's all that's left. Well, I mean, his body's there. But you can see his Green Boots. It's like, oh, you swing a left at Green Boots. And then you keep going. And then there's, you know, this guy. And you'll go around him. And then it's up that past that way. And it's really fascinating. And kind of morbid. Definitely morbid. <laughs> but kind of fascinating. I know. So, all righty, everyone. Have a wonderful week. We will be back next week with another uh, episode on something. I'll figure it out. Strangest species. Something strange for sure. Yep. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.